Did, did you review the, the, uh, the I reviewed, deposition? The, doesn't he look like Dr. old ninja? Curry. Holy shit. Dr. Curry. Yes, I reviewed Dr. Yes, I'm sorry. Oh yes, I reviewed testimony of Dr. Curry. I reviewed Dr. Curry's reports. I oh, my Dr. God. You guys see that? Like, okay. what and what if it, Did happened? you review the deposition and trial testimony of Dr. Hughes? Yes. Objection, Your Honor, beyond the scope of the disclosure. Dr. Blevins? Yeah. I, uh, I'll allow that. Thank you, Your Honor. Overruled. Mm -hmm. Did you interview Mr. Depp? No, I did not. Interesting. Did you but request to interview? I requested to interview Mr. Depp twice, and both times Mr. Depp and his lawyers refused. Okay. Dr. Spiegel, I'm going to ask you some questions in this case respecting your opinions mm -hmm. and, and the opinions you have formed and the basis for them. And I'm going to ask you to provide me with, in a reasonable degree of medical probability okay. or certainty. Can you do that? Yes. I think he okay. can probably do that. Sure. And what were you requested to analyze and opine in this case? So it's fourfold. Uh, one, I was asked to opine about the risk factors opine. that are associated with intimate partner violence and behaviors that are shown risk factors that are shown in intimate partner violence to be consistent with behaviors that Mr. Depp has demonstrated. Two, I've been asked to opine about the acute effects on alcohol and substance use, and I mentioned that including mood, behavior, cognition, functional impairment. Three, talking about the psychological profile, if you would, of, I'm is there a question? I'm sorry. Oh, no. Okay. Of a uh, psychological and that medical sequelae of patients who have suffered uh, intimate partner violence and perpetrated intimate partner violence and whether or not Mr. Death's behavior is consistent with that. And lastly, about uh, alcohol and other substance use disorders, mm -hmm. their diagnostic criteria, their medical and psychological effects, psychiatric effects, their cognitive effects, and their functional effects. And I I think I would like to just, just go with the jury one other thing. When we talk about, when, we, when psychiatry talks about substance use disorders, I, it's imperative to understand we're not talking about someone who rarely uses and happens to have a bad night. We're not talking about Save someone who uses Thank on you. a weekly basis and right. has a bad night. Okay. We're talking about repetitive patterns of behavior that meet a list of 11 criteria that could be deemed mild, moderate, or severe. Because I think people get confused when they hear the word substance abuse that they think of, oh, I may have used this because I used it twice. There is a whole criteria of behavior and sequelae and consequences that go with a substance use disorder. This is easy. I'm not just talking about someone who will occasionally smoke a joint or smokes a joint or snorts they occasionally both COVID, did okay, this. or has alcohol. Uh, so I really need to reiterate that because I think when you look at psychiatric behavior, we tend to look, people look online and say, my gosh, I have all seven of these, right? And they, oh, they're that's really how you get cancer. not quite the way the psychiatric when you have a headache. supposed to go. So please, when I'm talking about this, I need you to understand, one, that that's what's going on. As I told you about intimate partner violence, it's horrible that anyone would strike anyone, He gets paid by the hour. Okay? But again, we're talking about repetitive behaviors for means He gets paid by the hour, guys. Right. So that's real important to understand when you're moving forward. Mm -hmm. I may say occasionally substance abuse, yeah. but what I'm referring to is substance Objection abuse. Objection beyond the scope of the question. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, I don't sustain. Next question. Thank you. Dr. Spiegel, could the you Wizard please Destroyer. just summarize for the jury the conclusions you came to with your opinions and, and then we'll take you through the specifics? So in my opinion, based on my re review of the evidence, <laughs> silenced. Based on my clinical experience, based on my publishing experience, based on my teaching experience, that Mr. Depp has behaviors that are consistent with both someone who has a substance use disorder uh -huh. as well as consistent behaviors for someone who is a perpetrator of intimate partner violence. Okay, well, what about the second one? Because we Thank know you. the first one. I'm going to start with the impact of drug and alcohol abuse over time. First of all, based upon he your didn't review interview him, of the by record the evidence, what type of drugs has Mr. Depp used? So, Mr. Depp, and I will get, I'm talking about use, we're talking about a substance use disorder here. We're not just talking about use, okay? So we are talking about alcohol. We are talking about Hourly. amphetamines. 
hourly pay. We are talking about marijuana. Mm -hmm. We are talking about cocaine. Write this down. It's going to be on the test. We are talking about ecstasy. Yep. We are talking about opiates. <laughs> we are talking about prescription benzodiazepines. And we'll get oh, into a separate thing about the abusability of Seroquel and or Gabapentin mm -hmm. Iran. And we are talking about much of the time so all of them. current use, meeting simultaneously. No. Oh. In your practice, do some patients suggest Mega to you high. that drugs and alcohol actually help them? So, of course, I think say it's that. Pa patients who lack insight or are in the very early stages of recognizing they have a quote unquote problem will sometimes actually say that they have this medication actually calms me down. This medication makes me feel better. Well, it's not what it's supposed to do. In actuality, they may not what? acutely feel anything, but chronic and continual use will take its toll on the brain. So the answer is yes, but again, people who have substance use disorders have a very have I'm lack confused. of insight and a lack of judgment about what's going on. I guess substance abuse. Very poor uh, moderates of their own. What's the difference? Age. Yeah, yeah. Has Mr. Depp suggested, based on your review of the record evidence, that alcohol and drugs actually help him? In a review of the evidence, he has suggested that alcohol, uh, Xanax, I'm in the list of medications, do help. Although I will also tell you on review of, of course the evidence they help somehow. that there were at least two times I can remember Wouldn't be prescribed. that uh, Mr. Depp was referring to uh, at least short-lived periods of sobriety, and I cannot exactly tell you what uh -huh. that included, that both times he said that he functioned better and that he recognized that alcohol and drugs was at the root of his problems. Okay. Now, there have been, there's been testimony that Mr. Depp is quite charming, both off and on the drugs and the alcohol. What is your answer to that? So, again, let me put one thing clear here. Yeah. I am not here to impeach Mr. Depp's acting skills or his persona. He has way greater skills than I do in that. What I'm Aww. here to say is talk about how drugs and alcohol affect what we all have in common. We're all human beings. We can all only get so much, take gets so much, paid by an hour. something is going to happen. He gets paid hourly. That's what I see every day in the emergency room, on the console service. Every hour he gets money. Psychiatry. Bad things happen. So the longer Not that he talks, anything special, the more money he all gets. Human beings. And our brain and he substance just, of abuse are not titrated. They're mm -hmm. not regulated by the Eric, FDA. We don't know what we're getting. Uh -huh. We don't know how much yep. we're getting. Keep it there up. There's no control over what makes it yep. to our brain. So it is not the actor. It is not the persona. Okay? It is a person just like the rest of us who are human beings who will have these effects. And that's what we all share in common. Uh -huh. Everyone in this courtroom shares that in common. When Mr. Depp was in his relationship with Amber Heard, was he a poly substance abuser? Was he in what substance abuse? Poly substance. Poly substance multiple. Yes. Poly is multiple. Can you explain Leaving your what own. that is? Oh, overruled. I'm sorry. Okay. Can, go ahead. Okay, so poly substance abuse is the use of mm -hmm. three or more substances. And I answer, like I said, concurrently, um, he was. Even while I was getting ready for rehab. Uh -huh. On the island, he was. So, yes, he did engage in that. Did Mr. Depp's drug and alcohol abuse affect him cognitively? Yes. Okay. So, if if nothing else to look at, uh, Dr. Uh, Blaustein, a psychiatrist at Valley, Mr. Depp, uh, did a mini mental state exam on him. And as part of that mini mental state examination, you're Are asked drugs, to remember drugs? three words and then come back five minutes later and mm -hmm. repeat those three words. And right. in the meanwhile, you're getting other types of testing for attention and concentration and visual, spatial and language. So other things that are being tested too. Um, Mr. Depp was unable to recall any of them. And that is very unusual for a 50-ish year old male. I don't remember how old he was when he took that. Uh -huh. um, generally speaking, um, uh, that age group should be remembering two That's... or all three of those words. Um, one, I do know that 
his uh, lines were also fed to him by earpiece. Uh, again, affecting memory. I did see in deposition, uh -huh. I'm sorry, video deposition about having to have uh, questions. I don't want to say repeat as much as completely forgotten. So the answer is yes. And, and you know, any, again, any one of us who use alcohol and cocaine to that level of degree, and I'm talking about a severe level of substance use disorder, yeah. are going to have effects it is inescapable because we all have brains that are malaffected by extensive substance use, and potentially sometimes less, but certainly what we're talking about here is extensive. Okay. What, if any, uh, anything did you, did you observe paid by the from hour. the record evidence about Mr. Depp having difficulty focusing, his attention span, processing, whether he could function as an actor? So, Objecting compound. I, it, compound is only oh, if it's over. It's like it, the implication is that so it's again, because of the drug of the use only. Part, That's we it. We do know that he needed his lines fed to him for movies. Okay. Part of that could have been also due to, uh, and I don't know which movie, and please forgive me about that, that he actually confessed he did a movie entirely wasted. So I imagine it would be harder. Only to do one? That. Um, uh, additionally, like I said, when I looked at that position, you can tell. That the processing speed was down. His mm -hmm. thinking rate was if you're down. Involving, obviously, yeah. If your thinking rate is down, and I'm not talking about it again, I'm getting old in life. I'm probably not as sharp as I was at 25. Okay. Oh, sure. But I'm talking about it so slow that when we're trying to move on to other questions, we're still trying to answer the original data that's presented to us. So attention span is very much impaired. And if your attention span is impaired your memory is going to be impaired. It is inescapable that mm -hmm. that's going to happen. So all that comes into play there. And that's what I witnessed in the, uh, in the uh, uh, video deposition. Fortunately for Mr. Depp, I do see that during this trial, that's he's, uh, uh, his cognition has improved some of which will happen if you are sober. Uh -huh. uh, so I commend him on that. Uh, but again, I'm specifically referencing the time with Ms. Hearns and Mr. Depp's relationship. So we're talking about that. What, if any, uh, uh, observations from the record evidence did you have about Mr. Depp having alcoholic blackouts or foggy mind? Again, there were reported times where he would be essentially, mm -hmm. quote unquote, passed out drunk. You saw pictures of him passed out drunk and not being able to remember what he did, which is, again, if you look at the record evidence, you will see that and this is linking intimate partner violence and substance uses together. I know we're going to get to that. Okay, good. Which is basically, if you have blackouts and you're using alcohol or using uh -huh. cocaine, it's going to be near impossible to remember what happened the night before. I don't think I'm the first person sure. that's ever told you that alcohol can cause blackouts. And basically, alcohol... Sure. Uh, decreases a brain chemical, glutamate, which is involved in memory formation. Okay. If it blocks that to an extensive degree, the individual cannot remember what happened because they didn't have enough time for their brain to process the memory. We need this brain chemical. Mm -hmm. So does alcohol blackouts happen every time? So, no, of course not. But are they a complication of a use disorder? Absolutely, yes. And there was record evidence of that. Mm -hmm. Dr. Spiegel, you said at one point alcohol and cocaine. Is it possible to have blackouts with alcohol and different types of substances? Obviously. Yes. So uh, my clinical experience, and I'll be, I'll date it back within the last month, uh, we had a patient who was using both, especially cocaine, and she had these kind of stroke-like lesions around the brain center known as the hippocampus, which is involved in memory formation. Uh -huh. So Objection combined, relevance. Objection, this is an hourly rate. Combining the two yeah. subs okay. together increases the likelihood, even if you don't get what is a mm -hmm. major stroke. And again, we think of a major stroke as someone yeah. who has speech difficulties and movement difficulties. There's a lot of different types of stroke that can just affect cognition. They don't necessarily have to have severe movement deficits or severe language deficits. They can solely affect you in terms of your cognitive symptoms. 
and actually known as a vascular neurocognitive disorder. So I, I, you need to understand, and that's part of the, the psychiatric diagnosis. You need to understand that you can have these insults, these lesions, these strokes, without demonstrating physical features. And at a minimal, we know that he was using both substances concurrently. And at a minimal, we know he had cognitive issues that we talked about. Sure. Or at least had some of that. Sure. At the, Thank you, Dr. Yeah, yeah I think everybody agrees on that. What is there between domestic abuse, heavy alcohol abuse, and cognitive disorders? So, um, implications. The risk factors, if you would, for intimate implications. Okay, and there are probably many of them. I don't have time to go over all of them, but the ones in mm -hmm. particular, the characters in particular, are one having someone in the relationship who is jealous or suspicious. Now, here we go. Two, having someone who has an, a, a higher than average acceptance of violence ideations. Three, someone who has rapid and extreme mood shifts. Four, someone who has limited self control. One of the roles of cognition, one of the roles of our brain is to prevent inappropriate behaviors and acting out on thoughts. We all get angry at people. That's human. We all get angry. Right. We all think things about people. The difference is when our brains are intact and working well, most of us don't act them out. Okay? Most of us do not act them. Yeah, I would say that's so true. So that's, that's because your frontal lobe and other parts of the brain are involved yeah. in making sure these negative you thoughts don't, don't out. get acted on. Yeah. Okay? Sure. So when you have the effects of alcohol acutely, it causes disinhibition, which means you are, by definition, losing control and having rapid You movement. do whatever the fuck. Two, you are affecting parts of the brain that are involved in what we call social processing clues, cues. So you no longer can interpret what's in front of you that is, I would say, right or wrong or what I should mm -hmm. act on and what I shouldn't act on. So we act on them. Even though sober, and I've seen it in with Mr. Depp's, uh, Depp, uh, Mr. Depp's uh, record evidence, I've seen it clinically, sober, we can contain that. We yeah. maintain that. But when you have these mixtures together, knowing, by the way, that about 40 up to 60 percent of intimate partner violence is uh, 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 done under the influence of alcohol and or substance use disorders, okay, knowing that treating it gets it better, improves, I'm not saying it removes it, but improves it. Hearing from Mr. Depp's own uh, text to Dr. Kipper, that he was better with that, that things are going better, will show you that given those confluence of factors, given them all lining up the risk factors, combined with something that when any of us, any of us use to a certain amount, if we're novice at it, it'll be a lot less. If we're more experienced, and have more tolerance dependence, it's gonna take a lot more, but inevitably will make us disinhibited and will make us act out, and acting out could be done in a lot of different ways in intimate partner violence. Uh huh. Okay? With also remember, guys, he's getting paid hourly, okay? Of intimate partner violence. So that's how they basically interact. He's getting paid hourly. Ms. Bernhardt, I assume you have. Uh, I, I have quite a bit more. Let, let's go ahead and take our uh, morning recess, uh. ladies and gentlemen. Just do not discuss the case and don't do any outside research. We'll be back with you. Oh. I'm sorry. Just say, okay. We're just, sorry, we're just taking a break. No, no. We're just taking a break. What? What? I wasn't done talking. I wasn't done. Look, he's mad. He's mad. Everybody told him to shut the fuck up. He gets paid through recess? Yeah, I bet he does. Yeah. We are talking. How long can he stay up there talking? If you let this guy go, I bet this would be the entire rest All of right, the let's trial. Just take a break till 11 then. And we'll come back at 11. He okay, would just you. start <laughs> talking. This is the kind of guy that i mean he obviously really knows what he's talking about uh he, he's got a lot of experience and uh he's gonna make sure that you know that now you indicated that you reviewed mr depp's video depositions is that correct the yes. ones from november 10 through 12 of 2020 and december 14 of 2021 is that correct yes okay mm -hmm. did you reach any conclusions about his cognitive symptoms insight and judgment in watching those 
So during the uh, video deposition, mm -hmm. what was readily apparent was a gentleman who had a significant delay in processing speed. Uh, and like I said, when you have a delay in processing speed, many other cognitive functions are going to follow. You're going to be impaired attention, concentration, memory, all that's going to, ha to happen. In terms of um, uh, having to... It's uh, an the, implication. The pro Another the implication, boys. The way the thoughts were conveyed were much more in the way of kind of disconnected, disjointed statements. It wasn't that they were not necessarily understandable, but they didn't have any coherent pattern until he was more structured by of his Bredehoff to kind of get to the point of the question, which happened throughout most of the deposition. Um, and so you he can just see that there was obviously some form of cognitive issue that should not be happening in someone in their mid fifties, mm -hmm. and it, probably due to the alcohol and substances. Okay. What, if any, observations did you make about impulse control? So, during the deposition? Or, yes, or, okay. and, or any and other, other record evidence either. Um, so, again, I, I think that under the guise of not being acutely intoxicated, I think Mr. Depp was able to control much of his behavior, much of his thinking, even if it was uh, aberrant or negative, he's able to control that. I think that okay. once you start getting to the point of adding substances to that, that will set it over. Um, if you saw the the video, I think you you all did about the uh, in the uh, uh, kitchen where there was smashing of glasses, slapping mm -hmm. of cupboards, and yelling at Ms. Her that you don't exist. Um, what about all the other videos? The deposition of uh, Dr. Kipper. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Depp is firing him and rehiring him and yelling and screaming. And I, and I do believe that a lot of it had to do with the interaction of, hey, we're trying to help you get sober. Okay. And it is obviously something mm -hmm. you are resisting not ready for, not wanting, and so you saw a lot of yelling, a lot of uh, a lot of acting out, if you would, which puts you on the state of, hey, this is a gentleman who has really significant trouble with delaying gratification, okay, delaying reward, um, and certainly one way to one way to uh, uh, make that significantly worse yeah. is with substances. There's no question about that. And of course. you may have subsumed yeah, sure. this in, but what, if anything, did you observe relating to erratic behavior based on the record evidence? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, again, when oh, you gosh. talk about erratic behavior, um, the uh, uh, I, I, uh, D uh, Dr. Kipper's deposition, I believe it was, where, um, and I think I made particular note of this mm -hmm. because I'm, in, I'm a psychiatrist myself, um, there was a very uh, large ranting about Dr. Cowan, who was Ms. Hearn's um, uh, psychologist therapist. Uh -huh. um, and the, the language, I, I, you can be dissatisfied with your provider. I have no problem with that. You could be dissatisfied and you have a right to go to wherever yeah. you want to go to. But it's paid by the, the hour. The texting that it were involved in this in terms of erratic behavior um, was disturbing in terms of yeah. the verbiage used, the, the phrases used. I, I'm, am I free to uh, use some of the language, or should I reserve that, Your Honor? Go ahead. I, I, I can. The jury, believe me, the jury's been hearing it. Okay. okay. So, All right. Let's go. One picture. Okay. So it's something along the line that uh, uh, Dr. Kipper is an effing charlatan. Um, he ought to objection hearsay. He's entitled to rely on it and he's to give his examples. He, he can talk about what he uh, developed from the hearsay, but not repeat it himself. He's entitled to give examples of it. I'll sustain the objection. Uh, Pommel. 
without giving the exact words. That you, you call <laughs> oh, without giving the exact just, words. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, got him. The exact words. Yep. It was basically silence, bitch. Vulgar language directed towards Dr. Cowan throughout multiple tests, uh, texts, mm -hmm. multiple um, things that Dr. Cowan were doing in, th uh, in therapy. Uh, uh, um, it was, like I say, it was without relaying it, the exact thing. Uh -huh. I'm trying to be as accurate as I can. Um, and I think at the end of it, I think he was also talking about that Dr. Cowan was filling Amber with positive thoughts, a therapeutic objection cycle. hearsay. Oh, I think he's keeping it more general. He's That's a storm ball. To rely oh, on. Oh, oh, oh. Thank you. So, the more along the line of giving Amber psychiatric. Uh, 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 jargon to put uh -huh. on him and, and and actually what I read and interpreted what Dr. Cowan's uh, was getting blasted for was he mm -hmm. was t you know kind of teaching Amber how to misheard how to use conflict resolution in a more appropriate manner and learning to express things more rationally rather than express things as irrational as they have been expressed I don't believe and, this. Uh, and for that, uh, there were a lot of negativity being uh -huh. sworn at. So again, erratic behavior in terms of writing a text, but I have no problem with people being angry. Okay, none whatsoever. It's just the expressing of it and the continual ranting of it is is was was very uncomfortable for me. I agree with them. I think but that they are full of I shit. I think we have seen in terms of erratic behavior. I agree with uh, Johnny Depp. Much of the psychological and the physical uh, maltreatment uh, we talked about. Objection that. beyond the scope of the question. Well, uh, he's getting... Sustain next question. But he's, he's being okay. paid by the hour, though. Mr. Depp is 58 years old. Are the behaviors paid by that the you hour. have been describing for the jury, are those typical uh, and age-related? <laughs> yep, she'll bash. No, so, well, I don't consider 58 years old. I'm 59, okay? I will tell you that I, the age-related changes personal that occur bias. in humans are very, er, they're very um, erratic, hit and miss. Uh -huh. Meaning they'll occasionally bear, be there. You may need a little God, bit more time be because to answer then I'd be question old. or pull things out of memory. Just you're just a little bit slow and a lot more inconsistently slow. Uh huh. Um, you wouldn't describe what. Uh, Dr. Blaustein's changes were, or what I saw in the deposition, attributed to age. Mm -hmm. Dr. Spiegel, what is Seroquel? Seroquel, or uh, quetiapine, is an, actually an atypical antipsychotic, which is indicated for many things, including schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, uh, adjunctive treatment for major depression. So it's indicated for a lot of things. And, and but what what. Uh, what effects may it have? I and mean, this is this is one of the drugs that, that Mr. Depp was taking, yes. correct? It was a prescribed drug? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. What, so, what, what, yeah, please explain. So the effect of Cerebral is, is, is it's very often used as a sleeping agent. Uh, okay. Because it doesn't have a lot of the side effects that are associated with conventional antipsychotics, movement disorders, tired dyskinesia, et cetera, or at least it's a very low risk of that. So. Uh, people have used it off-label. Physicians have used it off-label to help them sleep. The problem is the effect is very barbiturate-like, uh -huh. and it really knocks people out, or certainly if you use it it's a yeet and at delete. high enough doses, it can. Yeah. Okay? And the problem is, the problem is it also has street value. So it's I absolutely see. used on the street. I've never heard people that sell this. Down or like effect, and obviously it's a little bit more readily available because it's yeah, I never heard people sell this. Um, so it so it does have that street value portion of it. I mean, I, yeah, like Ambien, and, yeah. Doctor, but like Spiegel, what effect would this have on Mr. Depp based on the dosages he was taking? Mm -hmm. So, I think what you're looking at no, is uh, objection oh. speculation. Overruled. Oh. What you will see in patients who have substance use disorders are people who unfortunately kind of wake up and fall asleep only through pharmacological assistance, meaning that their own circadian rhythms are no longer in control of that behavior. So you will take stimulants 
to quote unquote get you up in the morning, and then you will take things like quetiapine, Seroquel to knock you out. Then why did Amber so have all the pictures of them? What these are being used for is and some he I'm didn't even have alcohol. And I'm going to get knocked out. And that's very characteristic of what would I, be actually legal prescribed substances. That's not illegal mm -hmm. at all. That's very legal. Um, and that's the seemingly these what these medicines affect are on patients of substance use disorder. Uh huh. Dr. Spiegel, what is neurotin? So neurotin or gabapentin uh, is actually an anti seizure medicine, mm -hmm. which it's, I think is in, it's, uh, it's indicated for seizures and it might be indicated for one chronic pain condition, although I can't swear that to you. That said, that said, again, in a substance use disorder population, it has significant street value, and people who misuse opiates often supplement that with neuron because it has this anti-pain calming effect. Okay. So unfortunately, it also can cause respiratory suppression, and so when you use it with opiates, they're very there are uh, people that are unlucky enough to succumb to respiratory suppression as a result. Jesus but it has a very Christ. additive calming effect that's bad that people use it for and what okay. effect would this have on mr depp in the dosage he was taking again I was waiting for him, objection. okay again what <laughs> waiting for the objection is have the street value of using it <laughs> just so with the opiates the i'm gonna keep going using with opiates and it's making because opiates in general he's fake casting does, are holy shit and you use it with it it offers further calming, which is why doctors yeah. have been warned not to prescribe medications like gabapentin and opiates uh -huh. together unless under significant strict following because it can cause serious problems. Yeah, sure. Such as death, respiratory uh, suppression. Yeah, uh, and that's a, that's a bad also one. Also, uh, taking Adderall, correct? Yes. Can you please describe to the jury what that impact? It makes you play video games better. In connection with the dosages. Yeah. So I need to take this. Adderall is a psychostimulant, uh -huh. which is prescribed relatively regularly for uh, ADHD. Right. Um, the problem comes again when you're, you're you sh shouldn't be prescribing or receiving Adderall when you're already using misusing cocaine. Oh. Okay. You're now doubling your stimulant. So I can just and use cocaine. What you are talking about, again, it comes down to in the substance use disorder population, uh -huh. you are using it to stay awake, have energy, keep yourself going, mm -hmm. getting high, getting energetic. And then the yeah. only way to kind of combat that, because you have this effect, is to kind of take downers during the day and downers being anything that's calming. Mm -hmm. So anywhere from opiates, prescription, anywhere from Neurontin, right. anywhere from Seroquel, all medications that are potentially, not potentially, which are abusable. And so that's what this is going on. That's what the substance use disorder patient has. And you, you know, it can't be yeah. given with someone using cocaine because that's an extreme risk for, for death. It can't be given together. Okay, and, that makes sense. All what right. What if any effect would these drugs have if they were mixed with MDMA or cocaine? Yeah, what would it do? So when you combine the two together, like I talked about before, mm -hmm. there are effects where you are looking at, right, the, the, the predisposing traits of intimate partner violence. Right. So jealousy, rapid mood changes, poor self-control. Uh huh. And to some degree, and to some degree, condoning violence to a certain degree. Um, when you combine them all, didn't together, Amber do you that? Get this disinhibiting. I didn't punch you. I hit you. From cocaine and Adderall. Then when you combine the two together, what happens? You get too much, and then you start mm -hmm. getting irritable. You start getting agitated. Okay. You start becoming suspicious. Yeah. Jealous. Right. Potentially. Uh, disinhibited, psychotic, and these are the risks. And again, we're talking about not your average everyday use of these substances. We are talking about chronic use together. Mm -hmm. And we also know that alcohol and cocaine use independently increase significantly the risk 
of intimate partner violence. These aren't statistics I'm coming up with. It all depends. Anywhere from reports up to seven to twenty-seven fold. So just a lot. You are quote, God unquote, damn. playing with fire when you are talking about substances and intimate partner violence. Uh, I, I, I would I would assume that's true. And, and that's yeah. all of us. Yeah, I would assume and that part's true. The substances that Mr. Depp was Ye taking and the record evidence relating to those, um, mm -hmm. did you draw any conclusions concerning uh, whether he met these this criteria or these risk factors? How could you? So, in terms of substance use disorder, when you when you look at it, um, uh huh. So, major role obligations not being fulfilled. Don't have any evidence about operating under the influence or not. Uh, social issues, especially disagreements and arguments with your spouse or family. Yeah. Obviously, there was tolerance and dependence for the amount he was using. Because if anyone is naive to this, these medications, most of us would be dead. Uh, yeah, that's Unsuccessful true. efforts, difficulty cutting back, using more than intended, giving up social uh, occupational obligations because mm -hmm. of this. I know there was part of it was right after the rehab on the island in Australia when we, Mr. Deb went out partying with Marilyn uh, Manson. Right. Um, and he was Objection a, beyond the scope of the question. Uh, interrupt. Actually, that's asking for the record evidence mm -hmm. for this. The interrupt. That, there it is. Interrupt um, successful. Okay. What other ev record evidence? No fake okay. casting okay. today. Um, so, uh, psychological using yeah. despite the fact you know it causes known psychological psychiatric uh -huh. and medical effects and i think that's been pretty well documented so in this case you're talking about someone who has a severe substance use disorder i, I do want to emphasize yeah uh let it down the jury that intimate part of violence and substance use disorders are two scourges in this country there are two plays. He gets paid by the this hour. Is very serious stuff we're playing with. Every and hour he makes money. Someone closer and closer to the threat. So the Objection, longer that he talks, relevance. The more money he makes. This is highly relevant. Uh, I'll overrule that. So we can just it's keep talking scope. and keep making more money. Beyond scope of the question. Yes. Right, so and now he's making money. Um, being confused. Tell me more about the relationships between substance abuse and IPV, please. Yeah. So again. That Let me repeat myself. We start from the beginning. And you are, you may be able <laughs> to control the risk factors for IT, uh, any of us. Just like me? You may be able to control the risk factors I think I for noticed. IPV. Any of us might be able to. Okay? When we're thinking uh -huh. and we're not disinhibited, not having these hyper intense emotions from substances, mm -hmm. once you add that to this mix, your brain can no longer do what it's supposed to do. And yeah, it's that makes sense. To prevent you from doing this, quite frankly, because it's wrong. Did you arrive at any conclusions concerning substance abuse and potential self harm that may have led to Mr. Depp injuring his finger? Oh, so I think the indicate. Here we go. Uh, before we uh, explained that pretty well, but it's going to be an implication again, Mr. Depp has a history of self-injurious behavior yeah meaning cutting himself mr depp has a hinge history of burning himself um i know when the does he actually i never heard that happened there was uh, yeah i never heard that dr kipper paraphrasing and not saying exactly that amber and him got into a disagreement related to her wanting him to be sober and then okay. as a result of that he said he got so angry he uh he cut the tip of his finger off so if you're asking me can someone who has or have i seen and can someone who cuts themselves burns themselves can cut a tip of their finger off yeah with or without alcohol or cocaine or the rest the answer is yes. objection yeah. beyond the scope of the question uh, exactly what you uh-huh thank you please continue. was it overruled it was overruled okay. Go ahead. Oh, shit. Uh, okay i gotta start again so, that, that is not a very far jump. I've certainly seen patients do a lot more than that who started out with similar risk factors of, you know, burning self and cutting self. I'm not going to get into the descriptions, but I've yeah. it has seen people do a lot worse than that. Another so implication. Yes. Okay. Another implication. You guys see specifically that? Specifically to intimate partner violence, and I know you've, you've talked certainly about it. Um, but can you tell the jury, please, uh, a little bit more about intimate partner violence and and what is included in that 
Oh my God. So, All right, here we go. Uh, the APA Task Force on Violence in the Family defined more or less yeah. this topic of domestic abuse, in intimate partner violence, as recurrent abusive behavior by means of psychological, sexual, or physical maltreatment uh -huh. for the purpose of achieving control or maintaining power authority and control okay can it include threats and intimidation obviously it includes so in the part of psychological abuse which is done essentially as a means of emotionally I, uh, and mentally hurting someone but with the same end goal to achieve control it can be uh, destroying property it could be financial which is part of that Verbal abuse, uh -huh. verbal outbursts, I'm sorry. Um, threats, intimidation, body language, all of that goes under the concept of psychological abuse. And you may be able to divide it verbal, nonverbal, what's exactly emotional versus verbal, but they're all under that rubric and they're all under the guise of maintaining control. Okay. Do survivors of intimate partner violence experience mental health issues? Obviously. I mean, not every single time, but I would assume, yeah, 99. Can you repeat the question? Do survivors of intimate partner violence experience paid mental hourly. health issues? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So survivors Ten extra of seconds. Uh, intimate partner violence. And by the way, I should start out by saying... It's hourly. We don't expect, in psychiatry, we don't expect our victims to be perfect. We don't want our, vic yeah. our victims to be unscathed by what they've received. Uh -huh. So starting with that, okay, it is not unusual as survivors to see substance use, substance abuse, substance-induced symptoms, chronic depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, uh -huh. or sub-syndromal sub post-traumatic stress disorder along the lines of bad or wise syndrome, and some emotional unpredictability. That's and again, you are a victim here. Sure, yeah, you are a victim. Do perpetrators typically seek treatment or counseling? No, perpetrators are are not receiving counseling uh, treatment. One because they're going to be probably having to tell someone that they actually struck someone, which is what their thought is about the big problem. Uh -huh. The part of violence is just the hitting. Again, important, but not the sole part of it. So perpetrators very rarely will go into uh, any type of formal counseling. Victims go into counseling. Victims are seeking actually couples counseling. Victims are seeking mm -hmm. couples advice to try to repair what's happening. Didn't did Johnny okay. try but to get in terms of actual try to get advice? Perpetrators? No. They don't do that. In your review of this case, is there I, I record feel like he evidence did. of physical violence by Mr. Yeah. Depp? So Objection, Your Honor. They both, yeah, they both did. Like, yeah, I'm pretty sure. No foundation. Do you want to approach him? Oh, there we go. All right. Uh, it, it's weird to me. It's like, obviously, there's no perfect victims. Like, that's clearly true. But, like, it's just, it, it, it's so weird to me that, like, all of this is being told in the context of Johnny Depp. Like, there's not even a question, like, I, I, I hope that they're going to be able to ask him questions as well uh, about Amber, because it's like, a, a lot of this same stuff, like, people are saying it in the chat a lot, I think it's very true, uh, is that a lot of this stuff could be applied to her as well, Gatorade? Yeah, Gatorade, that's right. It's fucking, Gatorade's great. That's the best kind, too. It's the, it's the yellow kind and the light blue kind. Those are my two favorites, man. I love Gatorade. And uh, yeah, what that's the thing, Mega Pine Sith, exactly. And uh, yeah, Master of the Obvious. Yeah, it's just it's so weird to me to see uh, to see this happen because I feel like what he's saying and everything. It, it's like it's not that it's not true. It's that the implication of what he's saying means that Johnny Depp is the person who's wrong. Do you see kind of what I'm saying? Yeah, he's yeah, it's a, it's a mana potion exactly. <laughs> Holy fuck. And I also don't think that Amber Amber trying to resolve things is legitimate. I, I don't think so at all. The reason why I don't think that it's legitimate is that I think it's a front for her to act that way in order to uh, make herself seem like the victim. 
And the reason why is because she has a completely different demeanor even after all of the situations like in the 2016, the, the, dis, the disposition or what a deposition. And like we saw this, right? I mean, she was a fucking psycho. Like this is, yeah, it, I, I don't feel like, what do you think? So she was crazy and then she wasn't crazy and then she was crazy again. Like that doesn't really make sense to me. I don't, I, I, I'm like, I mean, I guess it does make sense. That could happen. But I just feel like it's not, it, it's not likely. Basically, just explain Amber as well as Johnny. Yeah, exactly. Like, I feel like anybody who listened to this testimony, based off of, like, who they thought was guilty, this will only reaffirm what they already thought. Like, this is not, like, I, I, I don't feel like this is a, a guarantee. And it's like, are you going to not remember things if you're addicted to substances? Like, yeah, sure. Of course that's true. Uh, absolutely. Uh, New York Post said, uh, said Kate Johnny's ex will testify on Wednesday. Great. That, that's good. crazy when convenient. Yes, exactly. He's so biased and it's clear. Well, I think it's weird, right, to have like an expert witness, somebody who's supposed to be an expert in the field, and then have them give a one-sided perspective. I've, I find that to be a little bit unfair. I don't know. Like, that's my opinion. Meanwhile, Amber testifies she remembers a whole day uh, while on mushrooms. Exactly. It only establishes, cor establishes correlation, but no proof of abuse is happening in this case. Exactly. And, like, that's what's happened. Is that, like, all of the cases and everything that they've done, all they do is they try to establish a correlation. They try to establish some degree of connection. Like, because of X, then Y. Do you see kind of what I'm saying? Uh, is that they're not really actually... Like they're not using any evidence. They're not using any, uh, uh, you know, anything else besides that. They're just talking about uh, a, a correlation. That's all. It's all hyperbole. It's a slippery slope. No, it's like, it's like imagine somebody says um, one, two, three, four, and then they point at you. What do you think you're supposed to say? Five. And and that's effectively what they're doing to the jury. Is they're saying one, two, three, four. They point at the jury. And they, they're they're hoping the jury says five, but actually what they're what what they should say is well we don't know about five we didn't see any evidence for that you see what I'm saying people give too much credit to experts and acts like they're infallible and perfect people yeah I I don't I think experts are the closest thing that we can get to that though it's not like we have a lot of other data or like people that we could talk to instead that could give better information. And uh, people think Johnny Depp's is playing for time. They don't need. Uh, they don't need to with this shrink. I have no idea. Uh, Jennifer made the Amber the letter to Amber sisters coming on this week too. That's a good idea. Uh, I'm actually really curious to hear what she says. And, and I think this is probably the best way for them to play it is because I'm sure that there are people. And like I saw, there was this article. Uh, let me see if I can pull it up here. Uh, I liked the article, and uh, let's see if I can find it. Uh, where the fuck is this? Okay, yeah, it's it's articles like this, right? And I'll talk about this more during the lunch break. Uh, Me Too is over if we don't listen to imperfect victims like Amber Heard, which I find to be very ironic, especially in this circumstance, because wasn't that guy just talking about a uh, an imperfect victim or a uh, an imperfect actor as uh, as Johnny? You see what I'm saying? Yeah, it, it's it's very odd. Johnny's writing the book. It's very very fucking weird, man. What a moron. Yeah. I if each of don't listen to imperfect victims like Amber Heard. Yeah, so this is again, it's more important. I'll talk. I'll complain about this later. Yep, I'll complain about this later. So, mm -hmm. what have you reviewed that correlates with the risk factors for IPV that Mr. Depp related to Mr. Depp? So risk factor review that correlated, uh, so starting uh, with the, I guess we'll start risk with this factor. because that was a question that was put out there. The, this what is I an implication. Has demonstrated. Another implication. Uh, pushing, shoving, mm -hmm. uh, grabbing. Objection, Your Honor. Let me, let me see if I can direct this a little differently, Dr. Spiegel. Um, rather than giving the summary of what that was what did you review that correlates in other words oh. uh, did you review witness statements did you oh, review yeah. depositions so uh, photos yes uh -huh. so what i reviewed was in terms of like um uh, witness statements right dr kipper's right 
notes. Yeet. Very, very interestingly, actually, early on in, the, in, I think it was 2012, around that time, circa 2012, 2014. Hourly. Uh, Ms. Heard was... Uh, Action beyond the scope of the question. Interrupt. What he reviewed is the question. All right, let's, uh, let's see. So I reviewed oh, just the... So Ms. Heard's... Objection, there's no question pending. He's, he's, he's smiling. Go ahead and He's like, wow, we're wasting even Please more time. This is great. Therapist's notes, counselor's notes, text messages. He's pausing, exactly. Video. Mm-hmm. Uh, pictures. Um, psychologists. Notes uh -huh. and evaluations, uh, and I said, I said physicians' notes. That's what I reviewed. All right. Okay. Now you've indicated that uh, intimate partner violence includes physical violence, sexual abuse, and psychological aggression. Can you please describe for the jury what psychological aggression is and what it entails? Oh, so, I wonder where this is going. So psychological aggression would be the engaging in behavior for the sole purpose of emotionally and or mentally harming someone with uh -huh. the main purpose of, again, to maintain and control. So behaviors that can occur with psychological aggression include uh, insults, Fat intimidation, old man. Um, holding things financially against someone. Mm -hmm. um, I need the money for the uh, land jealousy rover. $50,000 a month. Um, property destruction. So all that I can't list all is of those. involved. Uh, a nonverbal communication, so threatening looks, glances, Shitting things on a like bed. that. All that is involved in psychological maltreatment and intimate partner. But, how, but that's literally what, what any, all uh, of the things that she did. What if anything would be psychological aggression if it was trying to control somebody's career? Would that be offensive? Oh, leading. Yeah, so, leading. There it is. So yeah, I'm trying to, so, trying to control someone's career. That would be under financial, the trying to, uh, to uh, mistreat someone, uh -huh. uh, especially, you know, someone wants to succeed. Uh, and trying to have a career, and you're preventing them from doing so by maltreatment. That's another example. Right. Okay. So I'm going to ask specifically about the risk factors for intimate partner violence. Uh -huh. Is substance abuse a risk factor for intimate oh, partner violence? An implication, of yes, course it is. it is a risk factor as well as a precipitating cause. Yes. And what... Uh, record evidence did you review that correlates mm -hmm. to Mr. Depp engaging in substance abuse? So the record evidence of, I'll just start with Dr. Kipper and uh, the substances that Mr. Depp was using and misusing both mm -hmm. in terms of prescribed and on urine drug screen right. were uh, brought out through that. Uh, is lack of behavioral control and impulsiveness risk factors for intimate partner violence? Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and what, if any, uh, record evidence were you aware of that Mr. Depp had lack, ex exhibited lack of behavioral control and impulsiveness? Uh, again, threatening. Uh, Objection. No. Record evidence. That correlates with an I'm on the risk factors oh, at this point. Thank you, Your Honor. Shit. Uh, threatening. Um, um, uh, s destroying furniture, property. Like a bed? Breaking things. Mm hmm. Uh, writings on uh, walls, uh -huh. mirrors. Um, they both did that. Blood on furniture. Um, well, that would be go with, with that. Right. Okay. All right. Um, and what if any risk factor is narcissism? Scripted? Yeah, a little bit. Partner violence. So 
A patient, before we get into narcissistic personality traits or disorder. Oh, here we go. The overall, it's categorized under what's called cluster B personality. Objection, disorder. Your Honor, beyond the scope of the question. Interrupt. He's explaining the narcissism. Well, I'll sustain objection. Oh, yes. Can you there it is. explain to the jury what's involved with narcissism as it relates to the risk factors of intimate partner violence and so what that realm is? So narcissism Another pommel. patients have, again, poor self-control. Mm-hmm. Okay, rapid mood shifts. I didn't mean okay. to hit them. As a result, they they have an undue sense of admiration. They worship power. They worship control. Um, they are they have lack of empathy, and people are generally kept around as long as they're useful to them. Okay. Um, a, a large sense of entitlement. Uh huh. Um, Anything else? Uh, need, need for need for need for praise. So that would go under narcissistic personality and, and IPV. Especially the need for praise what thing. Any, you know, uh, guys. I mean, require what if any traits would be requiring man. admiration? Would that fit into it? Yeah. Oh, yes. I'm requiring admiration. Need to be admires part and parcel of uh, narcissistic personality disorder. Yes. Would would being envious need to be admired? Yes. For Fragile like a donation, self-esteem? yes, of like seven million dollars. And uh, huh. what, if any, record evidence do you yeah. have that correlates with Mr. That's Depp interesting. Uh, being narcissistic? Oh, sorry, pledged. Well, Excuse I, I me. do think that the fact that he thought that Amber owed him, Miss Heard owed him. Objection, Your Honor. Overruled. Thank you. Go ahead. The fact that Miss Heard owed him and only wanted to be together with him Uh because of his fame uh, is an example of that. Um, I do think the jealousy aspects are 30 guys, uh, an example of that. 30 guys. Um, I do think 30 plus. uh, I I think Mr. uh, Mr. Tillett had testified that, you know, being admired is one thing, but then behind your back saying something else about people is another thing. Uh huh. And I can probably say with a reasonable certainty that to some degree, this whole trial is that. Objection, Your Honor. Ah. Uh, What's the objection? That's not. What the fuck is he talking evidence. about? Overruled. Speculation. Overruled. Please continue. Oh, here we go. That's the whole casting. trial in terms of narcissism, narcissistic. He's got aura mastery on. on. I believe that uh, Mr. Depp was very much a mainstay appropriately in, in, in Hollywood. Uh-huh. And then this was pulled the rug without... Objection, Your Honor. Can we He's be... able to explain uh, what he sustained that objection. Yeah, there we um, go. Interrupt. Can you explain what you mean by this whole trial? Yeah, this Honor, proceeding would go... The, this court yeah, case would go... There's right. an objection, sir. Okay, so yep, now, now that... Like, you can't see it, but I guarantee you. Yep, they're walking up there. Let's go. Let's go. Here we go. Yeah, he just loves to hear himself talk. I mean, this guy is going to be... That's it. Proof that they're looking online. Uh, what's this here? Uh, and what people are saying about Amber and using it? Well, it's obvious that they were looking online about what they were saying. They even brought an entire expert to say the same thing. I, I, I think that's uh, very well and, and evidently stated. Well, what other... Conduct of course they is are. in the record evidence that correlates uh, with Mr. Uh, Depp having being narcissistic, having those traits. Okay. Was the thing about the trial rule? I can't yeah, speak. Yeah, we're not you're not allowed to say that. Not say that. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. The the uh, the only other thing about narcissism, I think, in terms of the trial, would be in order to maintain any sense of control. Yeah. A, a narcissistic person really has to have lack of empathy because in okay. order to engage in behaviors that quote unquote are used to keep individuals in control mm-hmm. you don't really think about the other person you're not really caring what happens to that other person right so i think that's another facet so are attitudes accepting or justifying intimate partner violence a risk factor for intimate partner violence yes um, do some perpetrators in intimate partner violence try to minimize the IPV? Yes. So 
It is unfortunately not uncommon, especially during, especially during the calm phases of the abuse cycle where uh -huh. there is no increased tension, there is no acting yeah. out. Okay, you are talking about more of the honeymoon, apologetic phase, begging for forgiveness, mm -hmm. telling them how you're going to change, maybe giving them gifts. And then when the dust settles later in the day, a day or two later, it is not uncommon for the perpetrator to kind of switch the blame over to the victim, saying that- Did he cut hey, his finger off? You know, this, Did he cut his finger off or something? This never actually happened and yeah. tried to make me look bad, or an yep. allopathic defense where um, you instigated it, or an altruistic effect, uh -huh. doing it for you, transformative effect, that society kind of accepts this. So it is. Tell the world, they'll never believe you. All of a sudden, for that to start shifting during that time. Oh my it God. Is during the calm phase, and everything is, is relatively calm. This, of course, is when the victim wants to engage in, in treatment. But beyond that, uh -huh. uh, the ability to kind of quote unquote, for lack of a better phrase, win people over, yeah. family, friends, uh, the law. I mean, the very yeah, ability to do that is part and parcel of that calm, charming phase where it looks like the victim is, you know, just fabricating this. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and is victim blaming uh, a characteristic? Yes. Like I said, I mean, to blame the victim that one of the defenses are the allopathic uh, defense uh, comes along with victim blaming that's what the sense you're doing I'm yeah blaming like you like he cut it off himself made me do. yeah okay yeah and you're making me do this is exactly there record evidence that you reviewed uh, that correlates with mr depp engaging in this type of behavior so uh i think for a lot mm -hmm. of the issues seen the big precipitant was going to be the yep. need for sobriety Coming again, coming back to that severe subjection, Your Honor, non responsive. I, th I think he's trying <laughs> to explain it. Thank he's you. Not, no, continue. he's just telling a story. That's all. This severe substance use disorder. And many of their arguments, but what I reviewed in the record, stemmed around Ms. Hurd's desire for Mr. Depp to maintain sobriety. And that what was happened. So as a result, she was blamed for, you know, bothering him in a way he didn't want to be bothered, and that triggered what was going on. That's bullshit because he was going to see his lighting? his daughter. Um, I'm from he wanted to see his daughter. What if any gaslighting uh, is consistent with intimate partner violence and the risk factors? So again, when you start. What a bunch of horse shit. Be, when a person starts to be able to be manipulative and uh -huh. charming, you start to be able to win people over. And especially when you see someone who's a victim who is essentially vulnerable, emotionally, uh, emotionally uh, labile, okay? Yeah. You see that person, yeah. and then you see this calm demeanor in front of you mm -hmm. who is very charming, very engaging, very personable. And then all of a sudden it starts looking like the victim is just a, a I was essentially losing it. And i.e., they make their being gaslighted. Uh, okay. Is there examples where an intimate partner, uh, violent uh, perpetrator uh, claims that the victim is the person who's actually committing the abuse. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. How common is that? That's very common. Again, that's part of the, that is very common in the occurrence of the, like it's the, the, the um, honeymoon phase and the calm period of the abuse cycle. Obviously. Very during that time. They're both the doing them, this. They're shifting the blame or anything I, along that line. That's very common. This is happens. beside and the point. You indicated that you reviewed some audio tapes in this case, correct? Yes. And, and what, if any, evidence mm -hmm. did you review there that correlates with Mr. Depp? attempting to claim that amber was the one uh -huh. well i think that was what was said that amber uh was the abuse objection your honor interrupt send the objection what record evidence thank you please please okay. continue 
So that claiming that uh, Amber was uh, the abuser <laughs> in this particular scenario. Claiming. And what, what I will reiterate again is that, one, <laughs> victims aren't perfect, and two, it is not uncommon in the context of being a victim when you know that person is about to proceed or relapse into a substance or going to a substance and anticipating what's going to happen that you anticipate the next mood and start initiating self-defense. But by and large, that's not what's going on here. How? By and large, Mr. Depp, behavior. Objection, Your Honor. Behavior was uh, consistent. There's objections. So behavior sorry, was what? Objection. Was consistent okay. with another implication? Right, we, can, we can move on to the next one. Is prior victim shit. of abuse a risk factor for intimate partner violence? Yes. And what, so, go ahead. There is something known as intergenerational theory of violence, uh -huh. which is basically along the line of uh, observation, imitation, reinforcement. So you observe a behavior that occurred in childhood, you imitate it when you see that there's no significant negative consequences, but you do get the positive consequence of maintaining control of a situation, solving the conflict in your way, if you would. So that theory is, interestingly, it's, it's, it applies to uh -huh. not only the victims, I'm sorry, not only the perpetrators, but uh -huh. also the victims, because there are many victims who grow up in a house Bro. of abuse. Really? Are not abused, but they're the victims of abuse. Yeah. What are the warning signs of intimate that. partner violence? So, Warning signs would be increasing the tension, mm -hmm. escalations of tension. So that's when you start seeing, hey, partners getting angry, okay, starting to starting to break down the communication, yeah, starting to engage in verbal, nonverbal threats. Victim concedes due to this tension. Mm-hmm. And that leads you to the actual act. So these acts progressively build. Yeah, of course. I think that and makes then sense. They occur. Absolutely. What if anything? Sure. Uh, have you seen in intimate partner violence about apologies and promises? Oh, here so we again, go. The apology is part and parcel of the honeymoon phase. And promises are part and parcel of the honeymoon phase. Yeah. And you know the victim wants to believe it's going to work they want to believe their spouse is going to be faithful to this and as part of the abuse cycle yeah. um it ends up the as i should say in the, in the calming cycle like i said the victim tries to get some help to try to resolve this uh-huh until the tension build-up phase where yeah. something bothers them so again it could be yeah um uh, I, I know exactly what you mean. About substance abuse. Totally it understand. Could be bothering someone about finance. It could be bothering mm -hmm. something about your career. Anything is liable to build up tension when you have this frame. Bothers him. Of limited self control isn't that cute? And erratic. Yeah, isn't that cute how they do that? Mucha. So, what if any record evidence did you review that reflected Mr. Depp engaging in these warning signs, mm -hmm. including the apologies and the promises? I think it's that was almost routine. That after it was all said and done, that he would apologize uh, for he. letting this monster out, uh -huh. letting this anger out. Oh, this is. Oh no, he's talking uh, about Johnny. Okay, never almost mind. Almost routinely, um, and. There's very mm -hmm. well record evidence of that starting as early, early on in the marriage uh, in, in one of in therapy from his herd. So um, that's that's very common and very much occurred, recognizing what happened. And the other part of this is, again, uh -huh. when you can recognize that when you're sober, even short lived sobriety, when you could recognize that, yeah, that things are better. Sure. Things are happening. Yeah, all that Life makes sense. Is better. Then even that should show you that, hey, there's an issue here. There are issues right. here that when I don't use can be resolved. 
Doc, thank you, Dr. Spiegel. I'm going to now move to the Goldwater Rule. Can you explain the Goldwater oh, Rule? Oh, this is the one that we looked at. Uh, yeah. So the Goldwater Rule. Okay, let's is see. When it. Senator Goldwater was running for presidency, and I, I'm going to. This is in like the 60s. I think it was in the late 60s when yeah. he was, early 70s. Because Against Nixon. I was too young to even follow politics then, so I, please don't quote me on exactly what it was. Um, mm -hmm. But basically, what's happening is. Um, Clinicians, Barry psychiatrists were making LBJ? these quote unquote know. armchair diagnosis from their homes or mm -hmm. offices because they saw this person on TV, the way they acted, and were asked to comment about what they think their diagnoses are. And therefore, it was felt that that should not be done by professionals in these public settings. Okay. Sure. It, it, does it have any applicability here? No. Objection. Why not? No foundation. The foundation is another implication that they're vile. Well, the, the foundation is obvious, right? Uh, even though it's obviously like it, they shouldn't be asking us, but like the foundation is clear. It, they're, the reason why they're asking that is because they are um, basically getting ahead of the obvious accusation that this is a violation of it. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, that's it, it, the foundation is obvious. You know, the foundation of it is his entire fucking testimony. Like, giving his, like, a diagnosis on this and explaining everything about this. Yeah, that's what it actually is. And that uh, guy's so fucking weird. I, I just, like, I, I don't know about the guy being weird. I think the guy's generally fine. And uh, I kind of say a quick, uh, would be a call Jackson's like that on the fly. Yeah, you've got to be on top of your shit, man. You do. Uh, absolutely. Uh, look how he drinks. <laughs> I don't give a fuck about how he drinks, man. Uh, what does he have to say about situations where she actively sabotaged his sobriety? Well, I, I think that, like, again, like, him being sober and her having control over that was a method of power, right? And, like, I think, again, especially with, like, the fixation on being admired, I think that was, like, so strong in, in Amber Heard. It was massive. Uh, that's why she said that she was going to donate all that money, but she didn't to those, uh, those different places. And even her publicist says the reason why she donated to those places is so it would get more press. It's like that they just, they literally just went out and said it. I mean, like, fuck. How is this even a question? Jesus. Dr. Spiegel, do you remember the question? Does the Goldwater the rule have any uh -huh. applicability so, here to your testimony and your conclusions and opinions? Okay, here we go. Uh, no, it does not. And for why? Multiple reasons. One, um, the basics of expert witness testimony yeah. would almost be thrown away if you are not allowed to base things on what you evaluated of an individual, what you've read what about What are those individual. basics? So if I'm not allowed to comment on records or charts or information mm -hmm. that I look, then expert witness testimony can't be done. But more specifically for this case, um, it, in the Goldwater rule, the pure version of it was the armchair diagnosis of watching someone on TV. Uh -huh. Just, you don't make a diagnosis. More recently, I think that's even more recent. We've had examples of that. So you don't make diagnoses like that. Yeah, people do that um, all the time. This is Trump. not the case here. Yeah. Because they do it with I, Biden like I too said now. to you at the beginning, I have reviewed a lot of professional, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of professionals and their evaluations and their treatment course. Uh, right. Uh, uh, video deposition, picture deposition, court filings, uh, emails. I mean, I reviewed a whole lot of things that directly that's right describe it seems that way uh, mr depp and his behavior so i'm not commenting on a public opinion and i have absolutely no knowledge of of uh what's in mr Depp's it doesn't history. apply to him because he uh, thinks he knows more that, about it like watching a movie I, I, that's not relevant here okay and in fact i think you testified earlier you invited mr depp to oh yeah give and again twice leading it's obviously leading so to, to be fair uh, for an evaluation, for my own direct evaluation, uh -huh. again, I was offered twice that I can do an evaluation of Mr. Depp directly, and both times Mr. Depp and or his lawyers decided that that wasn't going to happen. Okay. Oh. So, and, and in fact, the court did not require Mr. Depp to... No, and the court did not require Mr. Depp to undergo... This it did not happen, okay. Okay. That would make sense. Dr. Spiegel, these opinions that you have offered here, do you hold them to within a reasonable degree of medical and psychiatric probability or certainty? Obviously. Absolutely. Thank yes. you.